done. Uh, Osman, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hey, good. Show all the goodness. All right. Yeah, at lunch we're going to have e uh, each of the speakers from the morning and afternoon will be at a table. And each of you will get to sit at the tables. And then halfway through, we'll ring a bell or something, and we'll switch tables. So you get to actually meet the speakers. Um, OK. Go ahead, All right. Just give me one second to connect sure, here. Sure, sure. Um, so the people who were uh, putting haptics into their apps, what kind of apps are they? Are they games, or are they there were two people? What, were you, what kind of app are you, what are you putting it into? Is it uh, pr productivity? It's on three already. Give me a second. Oh, toys. Ah, very cool. Oh. Uh, interesting. Okay. okay, great. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Osman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of No. Thank you for having me over here. Um, so, so, folks, um, a $24 billion textbook industry is going digital, and the incumbents don't have a good plan. And so we are rubbing our hands, smacking our lips, Silicon Valley style, because a lot of big change is about to come into this industry. And Textbooks today are you know, the anchor point in this transition. They're used in almost every course. And we have, we've taken textbooks as our entry point, our leading edge into the market. And we launched our app at, um, in, in June. And during back to school in August, we were the number one education app and became the number two overall top grossing app across all categories. We even beat Angry Birds. So we're excited by, um, by the, uh, the progress we made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through our app over here. It's called Textbooks. It's obviously in the, in the App Store. And what you see on the screen right now in front of you is the notion of a course manager. We're just not trying to make an app per textbook, because what's difficult for students is to bring together everything they need to study during a semester, during a term. So we are bringing a, the notion of a course manager together in which you can have all your courses and everything together in one spot with your textbooks. You can bring your PDFs. You can have notes and all those things in, in one spot. So you, know, you can touch at the bottom. You can make your own. Uh, you, know, you can add terms, add courses, and do all kind of things. But I'm going to start off by going into a textbook. Um, I'm opening Canvas Biology, which is the largest, uh, the number one textbook in America. And as you can see, you know, so we've, we've taken what's in analog today. And as a first point, saying, all right, let's bring it over to the digital world, because students want their books available today. And we have already transitioned more than 100,000 textbooks onto our platform. Now, what you see on the screen here is basically the ability to highlight. But the one of our biggest lessons that we have learned is we want our software to get out of the way from the interaction that the student needs to have. So one simple thing, students do a lot of highlighting. And you know, in most of the apps, what you find when you, hi when you have to highlight, you have to touch on one word, and then the, the grabbers show up, and then you extend it and go like this. What we think, that's the wrong way to do it. And somebody should be able to highlight by simply tapping onto the screen and dragging your finger. It, your finger should act like the, the highlighter. Now, everything that I'm going to go through, the stickies that you see over here that we can add, and the bookmarks, they're all part of the basic infrastructure that a student needs as they're going through a book. Now, all of you guys have been students. You know that students put uh, stickies in their book. They put bookmarks, all different kind of things. So we are bringing all those elements into, into the experience over here. But the goal is not just to have the minimal viable product. That's what we believe. Stickies, highlighting, and bookmarks are the minimal viable product. But how do you bring a more integrated experience to the student? For example, what we want to do is we, we, we want to be able to bring in, in this case, you know, here's a student who's doing, uh, who's talking about the Stanley Miller experiment. Now, there's amazing content out there on the internet that you can bring along with this content. So if I touch on the word Stanley Miller, the experiment itself, what you will see is we have grabbed a couple of videos from YouTube for this experiment and made them available. Because the number one thing you have to do in education is you have to make things in context. They have to be, they have to be available when the student needs it, not have to, 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 for them to go in a lot of different places. Now, we, we obviously have the notion of uh, bookmarks. So I'm going to go to another bookmark. And in this case, as, as you can see, the idea is I double tap on that image, and, they, and you enlarge the image, you bring the experience. Now, what we did with all these textbooks, 
we, we took all the PDFs, then we disassembled them, lifted up all the text and images, and then put them together in the same way, because that's what you know, uh, professors and teachers uh, want to see. But we wanted to make them a little bit intelligent. There's this button on the top left called Quiz Me. So by hitting that button, we can now create an image with every label across every book into a quiz. Just, just assessment on the fly, and all I have to do is uh, I have to choose the answers, and the system then automatically rates them if the answer was right or wrong. Why? Because when we lifted the text, we figured out what the words are and everything, and we can associate them together. So this is assessment, which is going to be the future in education, because textbooks will begin to go from being a textbook, a body of knowledge, to more assessment-based uh, systems. Now. Uh, other cool things that I want to show you is that this is not just about um, you know videos, but also how you would interact with your with your book. Now, in this case, I'm going to show you a 3D object. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn on no 3D. Now, what we have done is we have gone ahead and we have added a lot of 3D elements to many books based on what the 2D objects were. In this case, these images on the left are now interactive. That, that all these things are now you can interact with. Now, the nice thing is that I can you know, simply in, enlarge them, and I, I, as I play with them, I can move them around. Now, this is a simple, simple chemistry object. You can think in biology. I can interact with the heart. You could even have business students interacting with your uh, spreadsheets or, or tables and, and, and diagrams. Now, the idea behind going digital is, as I said, moving the book from its analog shape into digital is also as students are curating all the content they're putting together. Remember, the student cares about one thing. Am I going to get a good grade? Right? That's, the really, that, that's their bottom line. And how are they going to get the good grade? They need to come back and study the content that the teacher or people were saying is important. So what we're doing is as you highlight and you do all these things in the, in, in the book itself, what we do is we are saving everything in something we call a journal. The journal is allows you to, to take up everything that I have been putting together, highlights and uh, everything that I was showing you, and put it into a stream of information for you that you have to, that you have to worry about putting together. And you, know, you can do cool things like this in here that I could, I could be in a classroom, and I can say that, hey, I want to take a picture of this, this, uh, this board, or I'm doing a math problem. I can simply begin to now add information into my, into my app itself. So that's the No Textbooks app. You know, we have all, we are about to come out with some really uh, fun features like ability to write onto the screen and, and do those things. So they should be coming out pretty soon. Uh, great. Well done. Thank you. Uh, what's your, what's your, your big learning after building such a big disruptive app? What have you learned and, you know, what has been the big takeaway? For you guys as a team, you as know, a business. Look, so the, uh, this is something we learned when we were, when we were building Chegg, right? Um, that there, all these things have problems. There always be problems. Things will go bad when you're not planning it. And what I would tell everyone is we have been able to save potential real problems by being maniacal about customer service and dealing with customers when you have problems. So most of the apps, most of the people, you have a problem, you send an email, there's no response, people don't reply. You'll always have problems. We are in a service-based industry. When a student gets our app to buy their textbook, we are messing around with their grade. And if something goes wrong, and something will go wrong, and we had some problems in the iOS 5 update. You know, here's a funny thing that they wanted us to move everything to a caches folder, but during the upgrade from 4 to 5, they weren't moving all the items. And a student would lose all their content, and they're calling us, hey, I have an exam, what do you do? So we had to write special software to deploy it, because we, everything was in the cloud, to bring the highlights and everything things back, because Apple didn't tell us they're not going to use this particular folder during the upgrade process. But it's our customer. We had to deal with it. We stopped everything, and we said we're going to focus on customers. Now, you guys were originally going to be in the hardware business as well. Yes. yes. So um, have you absolutely completely abandoned that now that yeah. So, you know, so we were building a tablet. So our notion was you need a tablet for education. We were building it before the iPad was announced. So we, we believe in this form factor is the way to go in education. And we have licensed our hardware to Intel. Intel is a, is a big investor in the company. And you will see it coming out in very cool forms 
from you know a bunch of players. So, but it won't be the core focus of the company. Sort of. No, no, no. We're software company. It's, I mean, it's been okay. six, seven months now. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's bring up David from. Um